I'm making this video to talk about three sites that might be on your radar for book marketing, but you may not know very much about. Um, Goodreads, I'm sure you've heard of. You might already be on it. I'm going to talk a little bit about especially using giveaways, but also why you need to be on Goodreads. But the two other sites are Reddit and LinkedIn. And these are sites that you might have heard something about, but you may not really understand whether you should use them. Um, personally, I don't use LinkedIn hardly at all. Um, but I'll show you what you can do. It's especially more for business. So I see a lot more people talking about um, publishing, being an author, writing, that kind of stuff is popular, but you won't find your readers. You'll find other authors um, who are writing professionally. You won't really find readers of your genre, which is who you really need to be going after. And that's why I don't use LinkedIn, but you can use LinkedIn for a couple of things. Um, you've got groups and you've got pulse. So groups are kind of just like a Facebook group. Um, it's very similar to the Reddit groups too. And you'll find if you like, for example, if I really want to build up my nonfiction platform as an expert in book marketing, I would want to hang out and comment on all the stuff that's going on. So like, here's a group just on book marketing. I could follow along, um, answer questions and stuff. I don't because I don't think the people who are here in LinkedIn um, are very relevant for me as a fiction author. Even as a nonfiction author, I think there's easier ways um, to build your list and to make yourself an expert. I don't like to fight for attention. I don't like to go into forums like this and try to get people's attention by answering questions or being the expert because inevitably inevitably there'll be someone else who doesn't agree with you or who ignores you. There's kind of this idea in a forum where like everybody's opinion is equal. And so the people asking the questions usually just believe whatever they want to believe anyway, which is really frustrating. Um, so I would rather just put content on my blog where I can position myself as an expert. People know who I am and they trust that I know what I'm talking about. Anyway, that's why I don't use it, but that's not to say it's not powerful. It's, it's something you could consider. The other thing that you may want to use is Pulse. Um, Pulse is you can publish your own posts. So it's kind of like blogging, but you can publish it on LinkedIn. And LinkedIn is a really big platform. It doesn't necessarily mean you'll get more visibility or views, um, but it's another place to publish your content. And you should also probably be repurposing your content. You can publish on your blog and you can also publish on LinkedIn. Just publish like a week early on your blog so Google ranks it. Google won't actually penalize duplicate content, um, but they'll only show one. So if you write one article and you publish it on LinkedIn and on, um, on your blog, Google would only show one of the results. So you really want them to show the blog result because that's where you're going to connect with the readers and get them on your email list. Um, probably, as long as your blog is well designed and looks good. So it's kind of like Huffington Post, but you can post without needing to have an account. With Huffington Post, you have to kind of apply and convince them that you're a good blogger um, before they accept you. I'm actually going to add in a bonus one here, which is Medium. Um, if you're looking for a place to publish blog posts, Medium works really well, especially for like thought pieces or stuff that's kind of a little clever or intelligent. Um, it's free to set up an account. It, the articles all look really good. So if you have a really good piece of content on your blog, maybe you could also republish it on Medium just because it looks awesome. And the thing I really like about Medium, I actually reverse engineered a plugin a couple years back, which I still have. You could get for free somewhere on my site. Um, you can highlight specific sentences and share them on Twitter really easily. So like here's something by James Altucher. And the nice thing is if you follow people who you want to be known to, um, if he says something really awesome, I can highlight it and this will pop up and I can tweet it. And that will tweet and it'll use his um, Twitter tag so that or Twitter handle so that he will see my tweet about his post. So it's one thing to like share, share someone's post, but if you take the time to read their post and share a sentence that you really find meaningful, like a really good sentence, 
um, they're likely to retweet it. So if you're looking to steal somebody's audience, like if I wrote nonfiction and I really wanted to get my nonfiction in front of his audience, I would probably want to follow him and like every day go through his articles and tweet something really clever that he said because he's likely to retweet those to his audience, um, which is just free visibility for me, which is pretty awesome. So then they might follow me on Twitter. They might go back to my website, see what I'm doing. Um, but there's probably not a lot of fiction stuff on Medium, although I haven't checked or used it for a while. Um, so I'm not sure. I wrote one post on Medium. Yeah, there's some stuff. I mean, this is more like business people who are writing coaches or editors. They're, they're the people who would try to get more traffic um, by using Medium and stuff like this. But if you're a fiction author, most fiction authors aren't doing smart content marketing like this. Um, for example, let me see if I can find this article I wrote a year or two ago when I got my tattoo. Um, just in a, it's an impassioned defense of, of am writing. That's all it was because some people were against am writing because they didn't like indie authors or some something. So I wrote this really pretty decent article about defending NaNoWriMo um, and it gets a lot of traffic and it's on Medium. It looks good. It's long. People can follow me really easily. Um, I also wrote our smirking heroes turning teenage girls into targets for abuse. Just kind of different interesting posts that maybe don't fit on my blog or maybe I think we'll see a little bit more play. Um, you can put on Medium. I probably should also put those on, on LinkedIn's Pulse. Um, those are publishing platforms. Reddit is a little bit different. Reddit is some, some place where you share good material, but Reddit's tricky because the users are very, I want to say jaded and skeptical and intelligent. So they don't like bullshit. They hate promotion or spam. So if you're just promoting your book or you're promoting articles on your blog, um, they won't do that well. But if you write something really nice and clever, it's hard to promote your own content. When I've even when I've written like these good articles on Medium and I try to promote them in Reddit, people don't really like promotional stuff. So if you're sharing your own content, they may not really like it or vote it up. It works by upvote. So when someone publishes something, when you publish something, other people can vote it up. And if it gets enough upvotes, more and more people will see it. So your goal is always to get more upvotes so that people see it. Um, but like here's an article, 10 reasons why why A is dumb, though I haven't read any and I refuse to acknowledge some of my favorite books are young A. That's a pretty awesome title, actually. And the nice thing about a title, like I'm going to upvote it just because it's a really interesting, funny title. I haven't even looked at it yet. Um, so if you do it, well and you write really clever stuff or controversial stuff um and this isn't even very good like she didn't write a really full article she just wrote a couple things um, and i think this is all facetious i think this is all not serious it's just tongue-in-cheek humor so it's getting a little bit of play it didn't take her very long to do um it's better if you're going to write content like this, it's better to post the content on Reddit. People don't really want to click and look at another website unless maybe it's really amazing. Um, but if you're just sharing like posts for your blog, people aren't probably going to be very interested in it. They'd rather have a discussion piece or a really interesting question or like a case study where you put all of the information in Reddit so they can just read it and comment on it. And then Reddit is a social network site. So when you do post something, you should be prepared for comments and criticism and you should respond. Um, it's likely, not likely, but it's very possible that you'll post something and you'll either get no response or you'll get a bunch of negative comments because you tried to do something promotional or you didn't really get the Reddit culture. So it takes some time to get used to what's going on in Reddit, but it is one of the biggest sites in the internet. So if you can get something to the first page of Reddit, that's millions of views. Um, so it's worth 
looking into and being a part of. There's some things like I'm in the self publish Reddit has um what do they call them? Their communities, their there's a word for the kind of it's like groups, but it's not groups. It's a subreddit, that's what it is. Um so there's a subreddit called self publish and so I could just look at what's going on in self publishing. I also don't spend a lot of time on Reddit because um, let me introduce you to another site, Quora. It's kind of like Quora. Um, it's a lot of people asking basic questions that they didn't Google, um, which I have no patience for. That's, that also happens a lot in Facebook. So if you want to try to build your platform as an expert, you need to be answering questions. It can send a lot of traffic back to your site. Like you can be on Quora and you can just answer everybody's questions about young adult fiction, which is smart. I mean, if you're really like building your platform, you should be trying all of this stuff. But like here are, what are some must read books for college students, young adults? What are most enjoyable, popular modern fiction books? These are people asking questions. Um, some of them are decent questions. So you could jump in and answer and then you could say, hey, link to my book. It's a little spammy. You want to be careful to actually answer the questions, but you can get quite a bit of traffic answering people's questions on Quora. Um, you can do the same thing on Reddit. You can answer these questions. You can get involved in the discussion. I typically don't because I don't think it's worth my time and I don't like repeating myself because I've answered just about every self-publishing question there is. I've answered it dozens and dozens of times um, on sites like this or in personal emails or in blog posts or videos. So I feel like I'm kind of done answering questions. I'd rather just refer people to my, my books or my courses or my sites or whatever. Um, but Reddit, I mean, like here's Mark Coker talking about, he's on Reddit talking about the power of free. Mark Coker is, um, the founder of Smashwords, and he basically is marketing Smashwords by being involved in Reddit, um, which is something worth doing. I mean, it, it's something you should be considering at least being involved in. I mean, these are the types of things like you could spend an hour a week on each of these, um, which isn't that much. So like once a week, check in with Reddit, get in the com involved in co conversation, answer some que questions, do the same thing on Quora. Um, jump in LinkedIn, see what's going on. Facebook, you're probably on all the time. Same with Twitter. Um, but these other things you could just do like once a week and it's enough, really. Goodreads is something a little bit different. Goodreads is, a, is really a site for readers. Um, it's important to have your books there. I like to, because what happens on Goodreads is that people will find your book um, let me find my books. And then people will add them to their to be read list. They'll review them. Um, they'll share them. It's a very social site. So you'll see if you have a lot of friends on Goodreads, you'll see whenever they add something new, um, they'll talk about it or they'll share it. You'll see what they reviewed or what they're reading. A lot of times they'll share, like on Twitter or Facebook, they'll share what they're reading currently on Goodreads. So it's great to have your books um, on the site. I'm not even sure if my book is, oh, there it is. So this is my new book on Goodreads. And I like to get people to add my book to their Goodreads, obviously. Um, I use contests and stuff to do that. But the other things I really try to focus on is getting on lists. So like right now, this book is not on any lists. So I'm going to add this book to my favorite list. I think it's okay to add books to lists. Um, it's not really okay to vote for your own books, but once you've added your books, you can ask your followers to vote your books up the list. And that's a lot of free visibility. Um, so let me find, I'm going to search in lists for dystopia or dystopian. best dystopian and post-apocalyptic fiction. 
So I'm going to add my book to that list. I'll just do this once because it's a little bit slow. I can vote. I, I can add any book that I've read, and I can also vote for my own books. It's really going very, very slowly. Weird. Okay, I don't know what's going on, but um, later I'll go back and I'll add this book to a bunch of lists. Then I'll hope, or I'll ask my followers to vote them up. So like this one, it's also pretty interesting. You can see um, in this category, Best Utopian Young Adult Fiction, Hunger Games has 7,000 votes. But if you go down to the end of this list, or even like, I guess there's 100 per page. So the 100th one only has 72 votes. So I can get 100 of my followers to vote on my book and show up on the first page in this category um, with all these other bestsellers, which is really powerful. And uh, most authors aren't taking advantage of it the way that they should be. So that's definitely something I'm gonna focus on. The other thing I like to do on Goodreads is enter giveaways because um, unlike most other giveaways where you have to do all the promotion yourself, Goodreads has a built-in community of readers. So just by listing a giveaway, you don't have to do any promotion and you get a lot of people looking at your book. So I've given away um, three copies and 1,500 people entered. It's um, They don't do it for ebooks, it's for print only. So you have to have print versions of your books available and then they just tell you who won. You can get a, give, you can get a, a giveaway um, widget, but I didn't even use it. I, I didn't even promote it. I just kind of left it here and I got a lot of people entering anyway. And these are people on Goodreads. So a lot of these people, if they didn't win, they're at least going to see the book and they'll probably add it to their, to their list, to their to be read list. Um, there's a way you can check actually. Let me see. Somewhere down here, it says how many people have added it to their to their lists. Dun, dun, dun. I don't know, maybe not. Um, I thought there was a way they would say like 300 people added it to their to be read list or something. I've also gotten some reviews. That's awesome. Um, interesting. Anyway. There's there's details. I'm not a prolific um, Goodreads user. I mostly just use it for those two, for giveaways um, and for trying to get into the lists because the lists are really good visibility. When someone searches for like, here, I'll show you. Um, if you go to Google, if you search for like best time travel young adult books, Almost always, almost no matter what you search for, one of the first things that comes up is going to be on Goodreads. It's a list on Goodreads. So here's the top 100 young adult books. Some of these are on Amazon, but a lot of these are on Good, like three different, well, two different things are on Goodreads. Anyway, so getting on those lists is really, really important for getting search results. Um, oops. I probably made that too general. Oh, I see, I did it wrong. So here, best young adult time travel books. The first thing that shows up is popular young adult time travel books. So that's a list I'll want to add in my book to. Same with this one, another list, another list. So it's kind of crazy. The first three Google results are all Goodreads lists. So um, if you do nothing else but get 100 followers who like your fiction to vote your books up the lists, um, you'll do extremely well in visibility, which can lead to long-term sales. I'm going to stop this video now because I think I'm running out of the topics that I want to talk about. Um, and I've talked about a lot of different things. 
I hope a lot of it's useful. And um, this course is just about over. I think I'm on the last video. I'm nearing the end of this course. Um, so thanks if you.